Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. A shooting threat leads to a lockdown on Capitol Hill today. Also tonight, a stop work order has been lifted at the casino. And it's an early Christmas present for some from the Department of Public Lands. We have the details. In sports, Saipan versus Guam. Can we get some more of that, please? Stay with us. These stories and more are next. Great customer rep. Always willing to go above and beyond for his customers. I truly hope she noticed. She gets noticed at work since I do see she she is a hard worker. A few technician that visited my home was great and helpful. Thank you. Thank you. You really keep it up. Your customer service is always very good. Awesome customer service with great technicians that are really helpful. Thank you so much, Sherlyn and Docomo Pacific. That's so sweet. <laughs> it feels good to see this kind of messages because, uh, you know, we try our best to do customer service. We make sure that we will 100% uh, solve the issues. For all those people that are seeking assistance. I just want my customers happy. And help them out each and every day. I would want to go to a place with someone that's just like me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Come to Docomo and uh, you'll feel like you're at home. Buy one, get one free for the off-road adventure at Mariana's Trekking. Come ride our side-by-sides at our best price ever and experience a great 90-minute trail ride. Rain or shine, hopefully rain. Book now at Mariana's Trekking, Saturdays and Sundays by reservation. Call 323-8735 or book at marianastrekking.com. You cannot drive safely if you are impaired. That is why it is illegal to drive under the influence of alcohol, marijuana, opioids, methamphetamines, or any potentially impairing drug, prescribed or over-the-counter. These drugs can affect your ability to drive because they slow coordination, judgment, and reaction times. They can also make drivers more aggressive and reckless. Driving while impaired by any substance, legal or illegal, puts you and others in harm's way. If you feel different, you drive different. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the CNMI Department of Public Safety. going out each day, doing what they can to hold us all together. We're here to help those helping us all by keeping our lights on. Off a day, Turuwami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Wednesday, November 25th, 2020. Police officers respond to a shooting threat up on Capitol Hill. Sally Lemus has the story. The Department of Labor was in lockdown this morning after receiving a call from a frustrated individual who threatened to shoot the place down. A DOL employee told officers that they were on the phone with a POA applicant who said they would go up and begin shooting if they didn't receive their check. Police officers were immediately dispatched and surrounded the area, while all entry points were blocked off. At 1 o'clock in the afternoon, DOL was given the all-clear signal as they successfully apprehended the suspect. 
57-year-old Zaji Zadrathara is being charged with terroristic threatening. The Office of the Governor expresses their disappointment towards the individual. You know, it's really disappointing, especially during the holiday season, like, like the beginning of the holiday season when we're, when we should be coming together as a community to see a threat like this on, on innocent staff that are doing important work based on federal compliance issues. Press Secretary Kevin Bautista says the CNMI government has fully prioritized the proper administration for the poor program in lines with federal standards. Bautista says DOL has no control over changing the requirements and are just as frustrated with the system. Because of the incident that happened this morning, they were supposed to be working until 7.30 tonight, but because of the incident this morning, they had to shut down their office, which would further delay it even, even in itself. You know, there, there are certain people in this community that are that that are are trying to bypass the process and 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 try to call for something for for a for a review process that is beyond our CNMI Department of Labor's control. The administration continues to ask the community for their patience. Reporting for KSPN News, I'm Sally Limis. Cocaine that was ordered on the dark web and came in through the post office to a private mailbox has led to the arrest of two local residents, and one has signed a plea agreement. The United States says Rob Wallace and Gene Bracken conspired to purchase 3.5 grams of cocaine and distribute it. The United States says the package with the drugs arrived on Saipan October the 21st and was retrieved from a private mailbox. Both Bracken and Wallace have been charged with conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute a Schedule II controlled substance, cocaine. Bracken and Wallace were arrested in late October and posted bail earlier this month. Bracken was initially represented by the Taurus Brothers Law Firm, but that changed as she was granted court-appointed representation. David Baines appeared with her this morning in federal court. Bracken waived her right to indictment and entered a plea of not guilty, but that could be a precursor to a plea agreement. A change of plea hearing is now scheduled for December 2nd in federal court. Wallace has signed a plea agreement and a court date has been set for April. The casino finally received the go signal to resume construction work. Sally Lemus reports. It's been almost five weeks since Imperial Pacific International was ordered to stop all activity on the construction site in Garpan. On October 27th, the Department of Public Works issued IPI a stop work order due to the failure to secure a building permit. IPI claims they have been working with DPW officials to work things out. And during Tuesday's Casino Commission meeting, the go signal was finally given. I conclude that, uh, you know, the, these submittals are in compliance and the Department of Public Works are ready to issue the uh, resume to work order. According to DPW official Isagani Salazar, IPI has submitted documents and has clarified that the engineers working on the project are indeed certified. But this order only allows work from levels 3 to 13. Salazar says the next levels will require a different agreement. That's going to be the, uh, the next uh, level of discussion with IPI. Uh, they cannot, you know, continue working on level 14 until the, until the uh, revised drawing and sub drawings are submitted and approved by public works. And then from there on, we're going to do another assessment just to make sure you know how much you know the cost for that uh, le level. But during public comments, a former worker of IPI urged the commissioners to stop the casino. Now is your time in history and your opportunity to stop this IPI cancer. Now is the time you are dutifully charged to take a righteous stand to protect your children, grandchildren and your people. Please don't let them down. With the stop work order lifted, IPI CEO Don Brown says their focus will now be payroll. The employees will be allowed to go back to work, but then there's also the funding of their payroll. So a lot of barriers. Reporting for KSPN News, I'm Sally Lemis. The Department of Public Lands held a lottery yesterday morning, making nine people very happy. An early Christmas gift. I'm so excited. Yeah. At last, uh, finally, the dream come true. 
That's the response at the Department of Public Lands where the Homestead Division held their lottery for lots in Cagman 3. So these are the scattered lots that we gave them out today are revoked lots. So we know that these lots are suitable lots. The DPL lottery happens twice a year, but due to COVID-19 circumstances, the department was only able to hold it once in 2020. Um, we wanted to have one earlier this year, but because of COVID, the government lockdown and, and everything else with the pandemic, it pushed us back to today. 15 individuals were contacted for the lottery awarding, but only nine appeared at the DPL office. Not everyone showed up. Um, I believe we have nine confirmed today that showed up. And uh, we want to, you know, reach out to those that did not show up and give them at least, you know, by next week. Um, we don't know what situation they're in now today that um, didn't make them come, but we will get them a chance to come in. These are individuals who have been waiting since the early 90s to participate in the lottery. How many years have you been waiting for this? It's been 24 years. Uh, 27 years? That's a long time. All nine were called up to draw a number out of the container. Too many. Too many. And then each person was shown where their lot is located on a map. While these awardees have been waiting decades to participate in the Homestead Lottery, many want to keep this land in the family, passing it down to future generations once they receive full ownership, of course. My plan to build, a, of course, a, at least a small house for um, my kids to start off. I have uh, six kids. Maybe uh, I'll transfer to them, you know, for generation use. What are your future plans for this life? Um, build for my kids, especially my grands. Oh, yes. So you're hoping to kind of keep in the family for yes. forever? Yes. Torres says DPL is looking at 300 lots in Osgono for the Homestead Lottery next year. The CNMI Salvation Army celebrates Thanksgiving just a little bit earlier. Sally Lemus has more on this. The CNMI Salvation Army has been helping our people every chance they can. This morning, they decided to give out Thanksgiving meals early, something they do every year. I'm here to, to just give it out uh, the food that we prepare for the Thanksgiving. For, so every year we do this and you know, we make people come and grab and just go. Santiago Lizama, who has been a volunteer since 2007, says it was a smooth turnout as everyone complied with the COVID-19 guidelines. I was uh, informing them to be a social distance because of what? It's, uh, our, it's uh, the COVID-19. That's why we're doing this social distance. If they don't want to cooperate and they don't want to listen, I have my authority to just leave the place. So now they're cooperating and doing lining up and six feet apart. Today's lunch was turkey, potatoes, and veggies, which were packed in takeaway boxes for safety. Reporting for KSPN News, I'm Sally Lemus. Coming up is part two of our segment with PSS, a very important topic. Find out more after the break. This is our annual Pacifica Art Contest. We had over 1,500 entries to date by local young artists ages 6 to 17.
come see the best sunsets on Saipan at 360. Build your own pizza or burger. Try our grilled seafood, sumptuous steaks, and sizzling Texas fajitas. Your whole family will love the food and the views at 360. And happy hour and daily lunch specials make 360 a great value. Make it special. Make it 360. The best food and views all the way around. by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the CNMI Department of Public Safety. We need PHI Pharmacy in Gofadahi, Tihinim Lomu. Our complete line of pharmaceuticals and lowest prices ensure you get the treatment that you deserve. Our compassionate, friendly, multilingual staff will take the time to get to know you, explain your medications to you, and answer any questions that you may have. We accept most insurance, but in case you don't have coverage, we offer cost-effective generic drugs. PHI Pharmacy, your lifelong partner in health. PHI, the pharmacy you can trust. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Tonight, a special segment produced in cooperation with the public school system. The topic, an important one, bullying. Our Chris Nelson has more. <laughs> is always it's a persistent behavior it doesn't just happen one time and then it stops it it's constant Sharina Clark is a prevention specialist for the suicide prevention program under the Community Guidance Center she's the mother of seven children and holds master's degrees in public health and clinical psychology when I was younger um, I, think I was 12 I didn't have really any experience with being bullied but I was um, suicidal um, I made multiple attempts on my life um, and that's what brought me into wanting to work with suicide prevention is I want to prevent um, kids, anyone in general, from feeling how I felt and thinking that suicide was the only option. Talking to the consumers that I talk to now, um, I think that that's what connects us is because I know exactly how they feel and it's not me just saying it, I really do know how they feel. Bullying can take on many forms, physical, verbal, relational, collective and cyber. If it's not addressed, it can be a significant risk factor for other problems. Um, so that might include substance abuse, it might include uh, aggression or violence in their other relationships, either towards their partner or towards their own children. Yes, those are risks that we take when we don't address someone's internal need, their tenderness inside that hasn't been protected well. And so um, we need to address those things of, of what are our underlying needs that cause us to protect ourselves in ways that hurt other people. Laura Kionka has a Master of Science degree in Couples and Family Therapy and is a licensed marriage and family therapist. She says that with kids now online up to 18 hours a day, recent decreases in cyberbullying rates are at risk. We suspect, and there's some initial numbers that indicate that 
um, with as much time as kids are spending online, that they are also increasing their aggressive behaviors and social violence in their online communications, just as they have more opportunities. Um, so examples of that might be creating a fake profile to um, embarrass someone or to send messages to someone behind a mask of anonymity and to pretend that I'm someone else. Um, it might be um, sending a fake email to a teacher or um, information about a friend or someone that maybe I want to get back at them for something. And so there's a lot of ways that those are complicated. It's not always just me sending a direct message to you saying that I think you look funny or something like that. Um, or making fun of you for something you did in class this week. Um, it's really nuanced. Long-term effects being that it could lead to anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, but it's also harder when it's online because the internet doesn't turn off and things are always there. Um, you could be sleeping and in the middle of the night someone posts something about you and you don't know about it until you receive 40 text messages the next day saying that somebody said something about you. Um, and it's really, it's, it's harder to remove things that are said online than verbally and just the share it gets, you know, and the amount of people it reaches, um, it's hard. Um, I feel that it's being bullied online is so much harder to deal with than in, in person. In person, you see it, someone can react immediately, whereas with online, there's, you have to get the person to remove it, you have to report it, and then it, sometimes the post isn't even removed until a full report is you know, made. It's, it's really difficult. What can teachers and parents and counselors do? As um, parents, as adults, as community members, we can call that out as well. If we call it out, then we set the precedent for saying, this is something that is happening and it is not appropriate and I'm not gonna just let it go. Um, and this not only helps stop the situations that are going on there, but it sets a precedent for those, um, for this, the students, the kids, the youth, to say, this isn't something that should happen. Um, this is something we should talk about and this is something that we should get help for. Um, and so I feel like Regardless of what we what we do, when we when we call that out, um, we are helping fix the problem. When we are not, and we're just letting it slide, we're actually helping continue to say this is something we can just kind of deal with on our own. We don't need to have support. But we all need to support each other. With bullying, there's typically a ringleader, an observer, and a target or a victim. Um, and that if we could um, kind of just tell our children or teach our children that if you observe something, say something. Nobody wants to be bullied, but then at the same time, nobody wants to be a bully. There's usually always an underlying factor. The child could be emulating what they see at home. They could be bullied by an older sibling, by a family member. There's always a reason as to why someone bullies. So um, we need to address both the bully and the bullied. Oftentimes as parents, we say things without really being cognizant of what it is, that, like the effect that it has, our words have on our children. Um, it could be that they're bullied because an older sibling bullies them. Um, sometimes, and I hate to say this, but it's true, it could be attention seeking. If a child doesn't um, receive any attention from home, um, sometimes they think that if they do this, it's gonna bring them attention at school. It's not healthy, it's not a nice way to do things, but usually there's something missing within the bully, you know? Um, and that's why they would, that would, that's what would lead them to acting the way they do. We wanna see about sitting down the students and kind of bringing them together. Um, but within that, there's a power dynamic that has changed. One student has, is feeling like they have more power than the other student, or the other student is feeling like they have less power. And having people talk it out is not really how, how it works best. What works best is when we um, confront the person who is, who is being, the, um, who's being uh, bullying the other person, and we just respond by say, calling that out and um, centering in on, on them. We don't need to center in on the situation or about how people are feeling at the time, but the idea is first focus in on the person um, who is being, um, who is doing the bullying, and then being able to focus in and say, um, and catching up with the person who is being bullied and just um, walking them through. It's not a together situation, it's very much a separate situation. Um, when, we, when we try to combine them, we just end up um, continuing the issue by, by not really um, solving the problem of um, of this power, um, the differential of power. We've seen some statistics that students don't feel supported by teachers when a teacher gets stuck and doesn't know what to do or um, 
you know, tries to intervene and it doesn't go well. And um, we know that one of the best protective factors for youth is knowing that an adult knows what to do. And sometimes we feel like we're all winging it, but even just finding out what are my resources as a teacher or as a parent or as a supportive auntie or uncle, finding out what those resources are to be able to support our kids or just saying, I'm here to support you. Um, if you've got a kid that you care about, letting them know that you're a safe adult for them. And I think that's really important as young kids can list every adult in their life as a safe, trusted adult. <laughs> um, and older kids have a really hard time thinking of those safe, trusted people that they know they can talk to about a problem or get help on a or solution for a problem. Alfred Ada is the commissioner of the public school system. I have a special place in my heart for at-risk population. These students are the students that are always um, causing, we say, problems, right? But really when you look deep down into it, there is an underlying reason why they are uh, exhibiting these aggressive behaviors. and. Um, as a teacher, as a counselor, as a high school principal, uh, I always say it. I, this quote really stuck to my mind. It's really stick to it. I still think of it this way. A child will always ask for love in the most unloving way. Us as educators, we need to help them. Help them because these are the kids that are going to grow up. They're going to be the ones delivering water to our house. They're going to be the ones working at the gas, you know, our grocery store. They're going to be the ones putting gas in our cars. Or they may be the one, be the next judge or the next governor. We'll never know. But we cannot predict the future, but let's take care of our young. Why does it continue to happen is we have all these bad habits. Habits are hard to break. And we've seen progress. Like I said, our, our data is, is showing a decrease for both straight and rainbow youth. And yet rainbow youth are still experiencing it on a higher level. And so what do we need to do is continue to promote tolerance and acceptance and affirmation and celebration of all identities. Even if we think that person's different than me, I can still celebrate who they are. Thank you. All right, coming up in the KSPN2 Sports Report, the Mariana's Cup is waiting to be filled. It's an idea in the works. Stay tuned. Pacific Rim, KZMI 1039 FM, and Mariana's Variety, in collaboration with nonprofit Empty Vessel Ministry Foundation, are looking to bring Christmas cheer to a deserving family with a Christmas surprise on Saipan. Do you know a local family who has fallen on hard times due to illness, financial difficulties, or other trying circumstances? You can now nominate a family by completing the application at ChristmasSurprise.org. Complete rules are available at ChristmasSurprise.org and on Facebook at CNMI Christmas Surprise. Nomination deadline is November 30th, 2020. Hi, I'm Dre, one of the personal trainers here at Ghost Gym, and today I want to go over some exercises that you can easily apply into your current exercise program. Now I have here with me Vince, and he's going to be demoing some of those exercises. Now the first one today is going to be a one-arm dumbbell row. Before I have Vince here execute a few reps, what we want to remember with virtually any exercise is your setup. If you start in a bad position, it's not going to look good and it's certainly not going to feel good. So a common mistake with here is obviously a, a rounded upper back. And 
as you can see, he's not very rigid or stable. So what we're gonna do is correct that just a little bit. So his supporting arm and his leg that's supported on the bench as well is gonna, we wanna lock that in. Open up that leg a little bit to allow for a better path on that dumbbell. With the elbows coming up way too high, you can see the shoulders riding forward and that's not what we want. So ideally, well, what you wanna think about is pulling with your elbows and stopping right at the midline of your body. So in this position right here, you can feel his entire upper back along with his core. Thank you for being here with us. For finding ways to keep things happening. For making things feel a lot better. Thank you. Energize, realize, feel so good just to be alive. Time's a gift, my time is free. I can spend it on you, you can spend it on me. I can say you'll be blown away by the change you see, you see in me. And I feel alright, dance all night, put a little flavor in. Thank you for staying strong with us. And for us. Thank you for always connecting. For keeping us together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us that despite this distance, we are still better together. Dokomo Pacific. Better together. Tonight, sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Buenas sports fans. Point of sports fans, here's a fact, Jack. The biggest crowds on Saipan for sporting events are when we play against Guam. The Northern Man Sports Association is hoping to use that rivalry to build up and improve our training programs. While the CNMI and the Marshals do not have much of a rivalry, Guam and the CNMI certainly do. Consider this, largest attendance on Saipan for sports, always in games between Saipan and Guam. It's true for soccer, football, baseball, and basketball. Namasa President Jerry Tan proposes taking advantage of that rivalry to promote and improve sports through an annual home and away Micronesian Cup involving several federations. The way I look at our sports here is... Uh, the games of mini games, uh, Micronesian games, Pacific games, is held every four years. And individual sport, some of you have some international competition. Uh, sometimes it's every year, sometimes it's not every year. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't happen. Depends on the budget as well. And uh, I talked to many athletes among, among different sports. And, uh, and one thing they really hope to have is more competition. But with the opportunities that abound for both our organizations, I believe most, if not all, of our organizations here in the international federations would be more than willing to work with uh, the MSA uh, and, and MSA in um, putting together these events um, so that we can both own our skills in, in, in every sport that we have. But for now, that's just an idea as Guam struggles to contain the COVID-19 virus, but the seed has been planted. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! Today's high was 89, the low 82. <laughs> That's not very low at all. 103, the heat index, 73% humidity. Tomorrow on Turkey Day, the forecast, isolated showers, east winds, 15 to 20. Pretty nice day. High 89, low 80, seas 5 to 7 feet. Beware of rip currents out there. Sunrise 624 in the morning, a low tide 1057, followed by high tide at 511. Sunset at 545, yes, sunsets are starting to get later by seconds. 
each day starting today. Did you know that? It's November too, end of November. Hey, thank you for watching. Have a happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you back here on Friday.